wanna skip town, see my wrist down, everybody wanna Yo, what is good, everybody? My name is the Coaster King, and today I'm doing a top 15 park rankings for every single park in the Six Flags chain. Uh, this is obviously one of the bigger amusement park chains in the world, so definitely gonna be interesting to go through and rank all of them uh, from my opinions. One quick disclaimer that I do want to get out of the way is that I have not been to every single Six Flags park. So, a uh, park's a like frontier city. I'm going to be basing my opinions off of other enthusiasts' opinions, pictures of the park, and if I've been on clones of some of the roller coasters, you know, that kind of stuff. So let's just get right into it. Kicking off our list at number 15 is going to be Frontier City in Oklahoma. Uh, this is going to be the six, the first Six Flags Park that's opening after this whole coronavirus situation on June 5th, which is awesome, considering it's the worst one. But, uh, you know, the main focus of this park is, is not mega roller coasters. It's not huge attractions. It's more tailored to, towards, uh, you know, looks, uh, attractiveness, and, and kind of smaller kids rides and i do definitely understand that but from a coaster enthusiast perspective you know it doesn't really get done too much the only reason i would go down there would be to ride the uh, diamondback which is one half of the lightning loops that was removed from six flags for adventure but other than that you know i don't really have a reason to go down to this park they don't really have any good roller coasters and you know their main focus is on kids so number 14 is Great Escape, and I think this is on definitely a very similar playing field as Frontier City. I think these are like the lowest tier uh, in the Six Flags chain, and they're, they're mainly focused on the uh, Great Escape Indoor Water Park, Indoor Lodge. And the reason I say that is just because, you know, Six Flags is going to do what's the most profitable thing. And in their situation, it's the lodge, it's the indoor water park. So they're going to keep adding to that rather than the actual dry park. And I totally get that. I totally understand that why they would do that. But once again, from an enthusiast perspective, uh, you, you can't really call this park the dry park at least to be anything special. The reason I have it over Frontier City is because of this wooden roller coaster. You guys see in the background right here, Comet is pretty good ride. It's not even that bad. Uh, it does rank in the top 100 of the Golden Ticket Awards, top 100 wooden coasters pretty much every year. So that's definitely a little interesting and it's just not that bad of a uh, ride. It's pretty much bearable. At number 13, we have La Ronde, the park in Canada. Uh, this park just doesn't have too much going for it. It does have the their, their B&M hyper-ish. I don't know if you want to call it that because um, it's not really 200 feet. But it, it does not have too strong of a lineup. It's definitely better than the Great Escape in Frontier City. I don't think that's even close. But it definitely needs one standout attraction that they can say, oh, we have this. And that would draw a lot of enthusiasts. Hopefully, they RMC the monster and you know that would definitely push them over the edge as some of the better six flags parks but until they get one standout attraction i really can't rank this one too high at number 12 i'm gonna six flags st louis i know people may get a little upset about this but i just don't think they have that strong of a steel collection uh they have obviously a great collection of warm roller coasters they have american thunder the boss right but they do not have a good steel roller coaster collection at all. They need one steel roller coaster that stands out to really push it uh, up in these rankings. You know, I, I don't really consider Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast to do that for me. Neither does Pandemonium, right? So I think they need uh, like the RMC Raptor that's been rumored for a couple of years. I think once they get that, then they'll definitely fly up these rankings because they'll have that one standout steel roller coaster that most parks won't have and offers like a unique, cool experience. Number 11, Six Flags America. A lot of people might want this one a little lower, but I think their lineup definitely uh, beats out something like Six Flags St. Louis. They have Superman, the Ride of Steel, of course, which is a decent intimate hyper. Uh, I think it does break into my personal top 20 or 25, somewhere around there. Can't really get the exact number off the top of my head. But yeah, this is just not that bad of a ride. Uh, it, the thing that it makes it worse than the one at Darien Lake is because it does not use the terrain well. Uh, those straight tracks, definitely a little awkward. But other than that, it's definitely a, a fun ride to go on. You know, this park does also have Batwing, which is their Vacoma Flying Dutchman when it's open. I've gone to this park three times, and one of my trips, it wasn't even open the entire time, which was awesome. And Joker's Jinx, which is their uh, premier ride, the launch coaster, similar to Poltergeist at Six Flags VS Texas. And now they have Firebird at being a foilless coaster conversion. So they, they have a decent lineup. It's better than Six Flags St. Louis's lineup, in my opinion. So that's why I'm going to have it number 11. But the thing that really holds it back is 
Uh, it doesn't have too great of a roller coaster collection as compared to some of these top 10 parks. And the operations are brutal. The food is not good. Uh, that's one thing the, that you'll notice with Six Flags America. The operations are probably the worst of any Six Flags park. Number 10, right after Six Flags America, I have Six Flags Darien Lake. I think they have a very similar coaster collection to uh, Six Flags America. They have, of course, Superman Ride of Steel, a clone of Six Flags America's Superman Ride of Steel. And they also have Tantrum, which is a Gersh Lowry Eurofighter. So I think that the, the lineup's honestly even out for me. Uh, the reason this went slightly higher is just because the aesthetics of the park, you know, and the operations, of course, because Six Flags America has horrible operations. This one has decent operations. Uh, this park looks a lot more beautiful than Six Flags American does. But as a coaster enthusiast, I really don't care about that as much as the roller coaster lineup. So that's why it's only ranked one higher and it's really not that much better than Six Flags America. Number nine, I have Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. I'm sure a lot of people wanted this one to be higher, but I just don't see the lineups that good. They've got the Joker, their RMC, and I think I look at it as, as an average, maybe even below average RMC. And outside of that, do they have too strong of a lineup? No, not really. They have Medusa, of course, which is a decent ride. But other than that, their lineup is kind of weak, in my opinion. Uh, it definitely gets beat out by pretty much all the parks that I'm going to say above this. And, you know, they do have that really strict height limit, which which sucks. And I think that they need a Raptor. That way, yeah, they need a Raptor or something to really make them stand out uh, from other Six Flags parks. You know, they got to try to break that, that height limit that they have. Uh, and then hopefully they can do that. Number eight, I have Six Flags Mexico. Six Flags Mexico is definitely an underrated park. They do have uh, Medusa Steel Coaster, which is the RMC, which from what I've heard, I have not gone to this park. This is one of the ones. Uh, it's actually very underrated. People like that a lot, and they think it's an above average RMC. You know, that's like a rare credit, so not too many people have going on it, but people definitely like a Medusa at Six Flags Mexico. So I definitely want to uh, throw this up there in the rankings, and of course, they have Superman Ultimato Escapo. I don't know if that's right. Whatever. Uh, which is a, a decent ride. It's a decent hyper. And, you know, definitely an underrated park in general. Uh, one thing I do love about the park is the aesthetics. But once again, I'm an enthusiast. I don't care too much about it. But uh, it does affect the rides with the theming and everything. So that definitely helps out some of the rides. And pushes their lineup over one that I would consider similar to, like, Discovery Kingdom. Next, getting to the upper tier parks in the chain, I have Six Flags Over Texas at number seven. I haven't gone to this park. I did enjoy the park a lot. Uh, New Texas Giant was decent. I think it, it's a below average RMC. Of course, of course, it's the first RMC conversion, so it can't affect too much out of it. Uh, the ride did get a little slow on the last, the last like, little lap there, but other than that, the ride was decent. Uh, I really stood out in the park. Uh, Titan sucks. I'm going to leave that right out there. Titan is not a good ride. And Shockwave is definitely a fun ride. Schwartz Golf uh, Looper. I, when I came to the Spark, I didn't really know about this ride. I was like, okay, just a Schwartz Golf Looper doesn't look too good. But it was an awesome ride. It got some good uh, forces. So this park is definitely a little underrated. Um, it's got some decent rides in there. And, of course, they're going to be another Mac Power Splash Aquaman. I am going to be making my way down there. Hopefully get on that ride. Looks like a lot of fun. Number six, Six Flags New England. I, I threw in this little bizarro Easter egg. Uh, this is back when it was bizarro. It was my favorite roller coaster ever. But when they compared it to the Superman, put it on the new restraints, it sucks. But um, yeah. So the the thing that makes this park number six is the top two that they have: Wicked Cyclone and Superman. You know, these two rides both are in my top ten. Wicked Cyclone, I believe, is like number two on my list. Uh, these rides are just awesome, man. You know, you get so much airtime in all of them. And even though the park doesn't look as great, even like a ride like Superman, it really kind of uses that river well. And um, it definitely has the, an elite top two in, in the Six Flags chain. Probably the best top two in the Six Flags chain. Maybe you can argue Great Adventure when they get um, Jersey Devil. But, you know, definitely a great park. Uh, I've been to it definitely a few times. I can't even count how many times I've been to it. And uh, please bring back old Superman restraints. Kicking off our number five, I got Six Flags over Georgia. This lineup is so underrated, man. Twisted Cyclone, people say, is really good. Another park I haven't been to, by the way. Uh, it's Twisted Cyclone, I've heard great reviews on it. People definitely love that ride a lot. Uh, people say it's like a mini Steel Vengeance, which, 
once again, haven't been on it, but I, I would hope it is. Um, that definitely seems awesome if it is. And um, they also have Daredevil Dive, of course, their Gersh Lauer Eurofighter, and uh, Goliath, their Hyper. So they also have Martin Bender, a short golf looper. So they have just a great coaster collection. It makes it really stand out. One of the better coaster collections in the uh, Six Flags chain, and that's why I'm putting it at number five. Number four is Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Most people actually have this as one or two uh, in their rankings. I've been to this park uh, once, one only one time, and I, I really liked my visit. It was a great visit, but I just can't say that it's going to be better than some of the other um, parks in the chain. So I get it. The aesthetics were amazing, and they really added a lot to some of the rides, but I just felt like as a coaster enthusiast, the most important thing to me is uh, the coaster lineup, and it didn't have that strong of one. I get it. Iron Rattler and Wonder Woman are amazing. Those are both rides in my top 15. I know Iron Rattler is in my top five. I don't know where Wonder Woman is, but those are amazing rides. But can you consider this park to be better than something like um, Six Flags or Adventure, right? You really can't. Six Flags New England also has a great top two in their top two so really saying that six flags yes texas uh beats them out beats all other parks because of their top two is, i don't think it makes any sense uh they have a decent supporting cast for rides like pandemonium but i just didn't love this park uh, as much as i guess it was hyped up to be uh the the core wall is awesome definitely has a good good feeling in the park uh one thing i didn't like was the food honestly it really wasn't good Maybe I just went on a bad day. And hopefully they can add some new coasters in the future. Maybe even a hyper if they can find some room. Kick off our number three, Six Flags Magic Mountain. Everybody, for the most part, has this as their number one. I just don't think that this park has that good of a lineup. This, this park, to me, exemplifies what quantity means over quality. It's like the Canada's Wonderland of the Six Flags chain. They have so many coasters, but how many of them are actually good? How many of them are you like, oh, wait, I really want to go on that ride. I take a bucket list coaster. X2? Yeah. Twist, Twisted Colossus? Probably. Tattoo? Maybe. Full Throttle? Probably not. Other than that, their lineup is pretty much dumb. You know, they don't have too many great coasters outside of their top three, four, five. And that's why I really can't consider it to be that high on my rankings. Obviously, X2 is a world-renowned ride. Seems to be awesome. Seems to be super intense. Seems to be super great. But I just don't think that it's going to be better than the other parks in the chain if it does not have a well-rounded lineup of a bunch of different rides that you can go on. Uh, I don't think it even has that one standout ride besides X2 and Twisted Colossus. I think it could use one roller coaster where they can say, like, this is unique. This is the best in the world. Almost like a Steel Vengeance type of thing. Hopefully, they get that with their RMC Raptor, and but we'll see about that. Number two is my home park, Six Flags Great Adventure. And I know people definitely like to hate in this park a little bit, but you really can't do it. I've gone to so many parks, and this one always is just awesome for me. Uh, El Toro, my number one roller coaster, if you didn't know. Um, best roll, one roller coaster in the world that I've been on. Nitro, an amazing being a hyper. They're getting Jersey Devil next year, which is going to be an amazing ride, I would think. I like one of them a lot, so probably Jersey Devil will be a little better than that. This park doesn't really get all the hype that it deserves, man. You got Nitro, which is definitely underrated. I, I had a whole video on why I think it's underrated. The airtime is really great. Uh, it's a long ride. It has a unique second half as compared to some of the other BM Hypers, and it just can't be slept on. Uh, El Toro, everybody loves El Toro. No no complaints there. And, you know, Bizarro was a great ride. King the Ka, of course, the world's tallest uh, roller coaster. You know, they have such a great collection. That goes beyond their top four or five. El Toro is great. Nitro is great. Bizarro is great. King the Cause original. With Jersey Devil, when it opens, is going to be hopefully great. You know, they got so many rides that you can go on. And um, that's what I think makes it better than Magic Mountain. That they have a better... If you look at the top five of Great Adventure and look at the top five of Magic Mountain, which one are you picking? I'm picking Great Adventures probably. I mean, realistically. And taking the number one spot is going to be Six Flags Great America. Uh, the reason this this park really is number one for me is because I think their coaster collection is honestly one of the, the best in the Six Flags chain. I know they don't have as many coasters as a Great Adventure or a Magic Mountain, but I think their coasters are all amazing. So starting off with Goliath, 
of course, their RMC conversion. Uh, it just seems to be an awesome ride. Uh, this ride does get average reviews in the public as compared to other RMCs. So I'm going to consider it to be an average RMC, something like Twisted Colossus or uh, maybe like a Wicked Cyclone, maybe, you know, like an average RMC. That's what we're considered as. Then you go to Raging Bull, of course, their huge hyper that everybody raves and loves. Um, Raging Bull is often seen as one of the best hypers in the world, so definitely want to give that a lot of props. You know, that has a, that's a great ride, and definitely no complaints there. Then we go to X-Flight, there being a wing coaster, and the only wing coaster in the Six Flags chain. This ride is really underrated. It, it looks like a lot of fun and offers a unique experience as compared to some of the other Six Flags parks. Um, of course, they have a Batman and Superman clone, but in addition to the Batman and Superman clone, they don't just have that. They have the only being a wing coaster, which is definitely another unique experience. Then you throw in a ride like Max Force, one of those brand new Premier Rides launch coasters, and that's absolutely amazing. They also have a good flat ride collection, a good indoor ride collection with rides like Justice League. There's just so many great roller coasters here. You have no complaints about this ride at all, this park at all, and that's why I have it at number one as compared to some of the other parks in the chain. That's me, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. I know there's going to be a lot of mixed opinions on it. Just let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think about it and, uh, you know, roast me if you want. Go ahead. I don't really care. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.